Hi, um, your tutor Hafiz is here and we are going to start our next uh, live online session for today. Today we are going to talk about the linear programming, okay, and it covers some of the assumed knowledge from your pre previous paper F2 as well, but I will try to uh, give you as much details as I can possibly in this session. Uh, linear programming model is applied for multiple limiting factor situations, okay. So, if we have a look at the session notes, okay, it is page number 49, okay. Right, so in a minute we are going to crack on to the linear programming model. So, please come to the page number 49 of your uh, class notes, session notes, chapter number 2. Okay, as you can see on the screen, uh, this model called linear programming, it involves multiple limiting factors. So, couple of minutes on the limiting factors, okay. We discussed in throughput accounting some of the limitations, okay. In paper F2, limiting factors were analyzed as well, okay. So, taking that knowledge into our paper F5 makes this idea. In a number of situations, what happens that organizations, whether public sector, private sector, profit making, non-profit making, they face shortages of resources. Some of the resources are scarce in supply. For example, material deliveries get delayed, okay, or there is generally no material available in the market, for example, or we do not have enough skilled workers to complete our production process to satisfy the full demand, or due to old and plant and machinery, our plant capacities cannot be fully utilized and we are struggling with the plant capacity, etc., etc. A number of times it happens that these resources are in shortage of supply. So, in the short run, when some of the resources are in shortage of supply 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, what is the best decision to make by the organization, okay. So, linear programming model helps the accountants to make relevant decisions to apply these shortage of resources in the most efficient way, okay. Most efficient utilization of resource becomes the aim. And what is the aim? Use these resources and make the maximum amount of money, means maximum profit, okay. Linear programming is a very long process and whenever it comes, it comes for full 20 marks, okay. So, in order to uh, understand the whole of 20 marks, because examiners normally put the whole emphasis on the, on all the steps of linear programming, so that we understand every basic concept involved here. So, I will have to run through everything. First of all, linear programming is a mathematical model or graphical model which deals with two products, okay. Simply two products because our graphs only have two x's, x and y. ACC is still not believing in 3D charts, so we still have one x and one y, okay. So that is why it deals with two products. Now, how it works, there are some steps, systematic steps to deal with the linear programming model. So, let us understand all of them one by one, okay. It is a very important topic this time around. Examiners have literally ignored it for two years because they were talking about relevant costing, CVP analysis, etc. So, this topic has been ignored from past ACC exams over the last two years and then it was coming a lot of times. So, let us have a look at this model, uh, linear programming. Here are some of these steps which are part of the syllabus. So, these six steps are actually your complete syllabus on the linear programming. First of all, we need to understand about the products, define products. In different books, in different notes, in different materials, you may see other expressions as well, okay. Step number one as define variables, define unknowns or define problems, does not really make any difference what we consider as step number one. When I talk about defining problems, actually I do not know for some reason I start thinking about my own problems. So, it is better for me to remember in the exams that these variables are actually products, these unknowns are actually products and as far as this syllabus is concerned or linear programming is concerned, there is a maximum of two products.
we will not be given more than two products because it cannot cope with more than two products. Okay, once we know our products, then second is define objective. Objective is an aim of the management which they want to achieve by efficient utilization of resources, okay, or these scarcities. So, this aim is mostly profit maximization, okay. Now, as we discussed uh, uh, applications of relevant costing, okay, or marginal costing, if you remember from last week, marginal costing or relevant costing. So, therefore, there is a slight shift of focus rather than on profit maximization, we start calling it contribution maximization. So, aim is to maximize contribution rather than profit because in making decisions, we use the marginal costing or relevant costing principles, okay? That variable cost is to be deducted from the selling price. Once we know the aim or objective, then we are looking at the constraints or limitations. So, please remember, limitations can be any direct materials not available, number of skilled workers not available, or plant capacity is just not enough. Now, as far as the uh, ACCA guidelines are concerned, they normally give around three to four, minimum three to four limitations, okay, in order to deal within time. You just got to be make sure that you are going to write all constraints under the step number three, which are limited in supply. If ever you see in the question and a number of time examiners throw a bunch of extra information, non-relevant information in the question as well that a number of people may put them in there and they will make a mistake. The mistake, common mistake is that people actually start putting unlimited resources as well, that some materials are available in abundant supply or unlimited quantity. So, if there is any resource which is in unlimited quantity or abundant quantity, that's simply not part of the question, as simple as that. Okay, that's simply not part of the linear programming model. Only those resources will be given which have got a limited supply available. That hours are limited up to 5,000, materials are limited up to 4,000 kilos, machine hours are up to 10,000 hours, etc., etc., something like this. Once we have sorted our constraints out, that this aim of contribution maximization is subject to following limitations or constraints, then we are going to plot a number of lines, a number of constraints, etc. on the graph paper. Out of 20 marks, between 8 to 9 marks are allocated to the graph. So, understanding of the graph is one of the most important area of the linear programming, okay? Once we have done the graph with, then we are looking at solving the equation. So, probably you are familiar with your previous papers. We used to solve some equations, simultaneous equations, okay? So, we are going to learn some algebraic equations which are not too difficult, okay? We will see how to solve these equations, okay? We can get the answers from the graph as well, but please do not trust your artistic skills like I don't trust, okay? Not, it's not only the trust trusting my artistic skills, but if I wouldn't solve the answer without using the equations, so if I solve the answer without using equations, I will simply give up three to four marks, okay? It's not like a matter of ego that, oh, with the graph I can find the answer, okay? Here is x axis, those number of units, y axis, those number of units. What's the point of these equations? No, there is a point, the marks, okay? So, we are after the marks. And then once we are done with this part of the linear programming, then we are going to discuss some of the resources uh, through the shadow prices and slacks. So this is all about your linear programming syllabus. Now let's have a look at a, an example or a question or scenario so that we can apply all six steps, okay?